Want to talk about the Detroit Lions because obviously, as Dan Campbell would say, they did what they always do. Kneecap. 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 You know, they did it again and against the Minnesota Vikings 31 to 29 yesterday in a fantastic game. I mean, this this to me was the best game all day long in the National Football League yesterday. I thought there was a chance it could be Minnesota 5 0 at home off a bye. That to me. This is this may shock you guys. That win was actually more impressive than the Cowboys win last week. It really was. Because sure, they go into Dallas last week and they mop the Cowboys at home. Well, yeah, so Baltimore. Heck, the Saints mopped Dallas in Dallas. Jerry Goff did his thing, but we know the Cowboys defense stinks. Lions defense did their thing. Yeah, we know the Cowboys don't have a ton of talent outside the ball. I mean, kudos to them. 47 to 9. Didn't see that coming. But they were just kind of toying with Dallas by the Third or fourth quarter, throwing passes to Lyman, running reverses for Panay Sewell. They were screwing with Dallas. That game yesterday tested your will. When Detroit, when Minnesota, when Detroit is in a spot, all right, this is early in the football game. Uh, they, they've got the got the ball first drive of the game. It's nothing, nothing early on, and they've got a fourth down and seven in their own territory, and they fake the punt. And listen, this is, I love Dan Campbell, but this is where, this is the only spot where he kind of loses me. It's like, Dan, this, the chances of this working are next to nothing. Just punt it away. Like, play defense. Cut your losses on this drive. The Minnesota rides that moment. Again, Matt Holm and the Vikings have about as good of a home field advantage as anybody. When they get going with that skull chant, man, that place is special. That place gets going. Minnesota's up 10-0, and as as a guy who loves the Lions, again, as I always say, not a Lions fan, they're just my adopted team. I I love everything about their organization, how they're built, and how they go about business and playing the game of football. But even me, who loves the Lions and picked them to go to the NFC title game, I'm watching it. It's 10-0. I'm thinking, oh, man, this is uh, it's Minnesota off a bye. Brian Flores, best defensive coordinator in football, second best, in my opinion, to a Steve Spagnuolo in Kansas City. They've got rest or at home. This is a big divisional game. Maybe the Lions got fat and happy off the Dallas win. And oh no, Jared Goff has went back to doing what he always does, and that's playing or what he's done this season. That's playing incredible football. Look at Jared Goff. The Alfred, by the way, shout out Alfred Parsler Jr. cranking out these graphics like crazy today. Let's look at what Jared Goff's done in the last four games of this Lions win streak. Uh, he's been amazing. Nine to one touchdown to interception ratio. Okay, uh, two hundred seventy one pass yards per game, and he is first in the following. Yards per attempt, completion percentage. He's completing 83% of his passes in this winning streak for Detroit. A pass rating in four games, not one game, four games, of 144, which for context is 20 points higher than the second guy, Lamar Jackson, who's going to be playing tonight. A QBR 73.8, that's first, and a team record 4-0. That's obviously tied with the Chiefs for first place in the last four games for the Lions. And what I love about this team what I love watching them to me, why they are the absolute favorite to come out of the NFC. Okay, Niners are beat up. Green Bay's too young. Minnesota, Darnold was good yesterday, but I still don't trust Darnold long term. I, I, he's given me no reason to. Okay, at any point in his career. So I'm, I, I can't start now. Okay, NFC's, Philadelphia's got a coaching deficiency. Washington has a defense deficiency. Dallas has an everything deficiency. Uh, it, Atlanta, uh, do we trust Kirk in the playoffs? Baker's great, but I don't trust the Bucs defense. The Detroit Lions, do we realize what they just did? Teams get fat and happy off big national TV wins all the time. We see it all the time. You, you win that big game on Fox or CBS, or you win the Sunday night or Monday night game. You're feeling good about yourself. Maybe you're not putting quite as much time in the film room as you did the year prior or the week prior, and someone comes in and kind of humbles you. Oh, no. Detroit blew out Dallas. But in that game, lost their best defensive player for the season in heartbreaking fashion, Aiden Hutchinson. They walk into Minnesota, arguably the best defense in football, as great of a home field advantage as there is in the game of football. Down 10 0, come back. After kind of beating themselves uh, with turnovers, down one, a few minutes to go. Jared Goff, can you save the day? Of course, he saved the day. And the Detroit Lions, who have had kicker issues the last few years, got the kid. Bates comes in there, bam. Right down the middle for the game winner. This team could beat you so many different ways. I mean, you look at the Lions stat sheet. It's it's all over the place. They rush for 144 yards. Jared Goff throws for 280. Okay, Aminar St. Brown, a buck 12 to the air and a touchdown. Jameer Gibbs, who was amazing. Offensive MVP other than Goff in my mind because he had uh, two touchdowns in this game and, uh, and 160 yards of offense. 
they can beat you so many different ways. If Detroit wants to run the football, they'll run the football. If they want to beat you in a track meet, they'll beat you in a track meet. If they want to play time and possession, they'll do that. They want to hit you at the top, they'll do that. They're great situationally. They've got the smartest offensive coordinator in football. Defensively, again, situationally, they have their bumps and bruises. I still think even if they don't get them, it would be it, it would be a mistake to not at least call the Raiders about Max Crosby, who's it's stuck in nowhere land with the Raiders like, right now. They can be cheering a different way. And Dan Campbell, this we, we got this, uh, this from the Detroit Lions YouTube channel, so credit to them. This was Dan Campbell after the game. If nothing else, if all else fails, God, this team, this team plays their arse off. And Dan Campbell exemplified it in his post-game speech. Watch this. How, how in God's green earth could you not want to play for that guy? I mean, that, that's that's what endears people to the Lions is they have they they're the perfect NFL team that where they in the sense that well, I guess what I'm trying to say is they combine the modern, clever, creative aspects of today's NFL offensive football. And they mix that with, we are going to hit you as hard as we can, and you may beat us. The Buccaneers did back in week two in Detroit. You're going you're gonna to be beat up yourself, you know, coming out of this game. Uh, this is, to, listen, unless you're a Packers, Bears, or Vikings fan, unless you're in the NFC North, I think this is maybe the easiest team to root for in, in the NFL. One of the easiest team to root for uh, in all sports. Uh, th this team is is incredibly constructed. Brad Holmes has aced, 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 aced the draft four years in a row. Dan Campbell is this guy ready to play, guys ready to play every single week. Their coaching staff, Ben Johnson, has, has been excellent. Aaron Glenn doing what he can on the defensive side of the football. I mean, they're without their best defensive player. Arguably, who knows, maybe their best player, Aiden Hutchinson, and they go into Minnesota on a, a, a team at home off a bye. After Detroit just came off a fat and happy win against the Cowboys, 47-9. Dan Campbell said it best. Didn't bat an eye. I, I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, that is the favorite to come out of the NFC this year. If they, Again, they lost Hutchinson. Knock on wood for him. Uh, I actually saw a report that said if, if they get to the Super Bowl, he may have a chance to return, which, hey, if, I mean, who knows? Because I think they're going to be in the Super Bowl. But I'll say it today. I, I want, want this on the record, even though it was on the record back in September. I predicted a Chiefs Lions Super Bowl before the year started. I would go so far as to almost guarantee that. Like if you said, okay, Chiefs Lions Super Bowl or the field, I think I'd bet Chiefs Lions Super Bowl. I mean, Kansas City, uh, let's, I mean, Kansas City has lost its Christmas. Like why? They got the best quarterback in the world, best coach in the world, uh, arguably the best defense. Why? A championship pedigree. They've won the last two Super Bowls. Why in God's green earth should I bet against the Chiefs? And then the NFC, I, I'm sorry, I, because Detroit has so many different ways to beat you, and Jared Goff's playing the best he's ever played in his life, uh, there's not much that this team doesn't do well. Like, that's the thing. They do everything, not just well, but at an elite level. Best O-line, run the football. Uh, again, Jared Goff, the thing with Jared Goff, the book is out, it's been out, get pressure on him, and he struggles mightily. But if he's got time to throw, whoo. I mean, he's a classic. He's the last of a dying breed of, of, breed of pocket passers. Boy, is he a good pocket passer in his time, though. I mean, this is a this is a special Lions team. I think they're going to be continue to be an absolute. Uh, because the thing, too, last thing I'll say in Detroit, and then we'll move on. The thing about Detroit that's so impressive to me is that, you know, last year they there was hype around the Lions. I said they'd get to the NFC title game, and they did. But generally, it was, okay, they could maybe win the division and maybe win a playoff game, but it was kind of a cautious optimism. And then they shocked the world. Okay, we've seen teams do that plenty of times, but can you repeat it? Uh, success is hard. Sustained success is 10 times harder. And the Lions actually look better than they did last year. I, I, I'm telling you, I don't, I'm not saying they're a juggernaut. I, I, what I am saying is I'm not sure who beats this team in a playoff game. Because I think they're going to get home field advantage. Detroit's a hard place to win. Tampa Bay's done it to their credit. Man, that's that's an easy team to root for. And I, I'm telling you, Chiefs Lions feels like a guaranteed Super Bowl at this point. Which yeah, who could have seen that coming? You know who could have seen that coming? Eh, I won't. I won't be cocky today. It's week seven. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.